Okay guys, in this video we're going to go over the recommended construction procedure for uh, 30 by 30 gambrel. Uh, really this applies to any of the barns that have a main, sec main barn frame section that is over 20 feet. Um, but uh, let's get into it. So uh, what we have here is we have interior posts um, and uh, um, supported by tie beams or, or tie beams posts tie beams supported by posts excuse me and we haven't set the center post yet um, there's a couple different alternatives here you could build it this way leave out these center tie beams so that you can drive a machine in here to set your your upper rafters or you can build your entire lower deck and um, work off of that and we're gonna go over both methods here um, in this particular method um, what I would recommend is is to go ahead and build if you're gonna have lofts over here go ahead and build those lofts out so that you have a place to work from uh, going up and then uh, uh, and then set your queen posts um, when you set your queen posts uh, all you really need to do is keep them from moving off the tie beam so to, you could toe screw these with a uh, 3 8 by 8 inch GRK or RSS screw um, that comes in your hardware kit. But anyway, um, go ahead and install those once you get your tie beams in place. Um, and and I, the reason I started from this point is pretty much this, you know, the, the construction procedure up to this point is the same, same on every barn. So uh, if you want to review how do you get to this point, go to our other construction procedure video and I will link that uh, uh, in, in the description so but anyway um, once you get to this point you've got it you've got two choices you can either like I said install these center tie beams or you and and then build your entire loft deck or you can leave these out and build up from here and put these center tie beams in later um, let's let's go with that option first and uh, I'll come right back and I'll show you what the next step is okay guys uh, so the next step once you are at this point is to go ahead and set these center um, trusses I guess so to speak what you want to do is uh, go ahead and uh, assemble this uh, truss frame on the ground and you'll uh, attach these um, sections here with GRK screws because you're using 8 inch screws and these are 8 inch thick beams you're going to want to countersink these uh, 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 rafter beams so that you have a, a good 4 inches of penetration here um, so you want to countersink these 4 inches or use longer screws um, uh, my recommendation is to countersink these because you'll have a stronger joint um, in order to do that you just all you need is a, a paddle bit or a wood bit that is uh, equal to or greater than the size of the uh, the head of the GR or the RSS screw <coughs> and uh, a long um, a longer reach uh, Torx bit that, that'll that'll go that deep um, those are easy to come by. You can get those at any uh, uh, home improvement store or uh, hardware store. So that's what I recommend. Assemble these on the ground first. And then <coughs> take some, uh, just some, some of your, uh, some scrap material and just kind of brace this. You know, put a, put it maybe a 2 by 4 across here, you know, in kind of a V-shaped pattern just to kind of uh, give this a little bit more strength as you're lifting it in place once it's set this is perfectly fine and even you know you may even want to upgrade this a little bit and put a king post in here um, basically it's just just a matter of cutting these three inches shorter and having a six by six that runs from the peak here to the center of the uh, tie beam and then if you, if you want to go even further than that, there's a, uh, you can put uh, angled pieces out here, uh, what they call struts, and that 
you know that'll kind of dress it up a little bit um, they're not necessary structurally but uh, it kind of gives you a little bit of dress up and, and it makes it so you don't have to do any uh, uh, bracing uh, when you're lifting it in place um, and I will I'll put a little clip of uh, what that would look like here in just a second okay you can see that uh, you know, here's that king post I mentioned, and then these two struts that go off in either direction. Um, you know, that is an optional choice. Um, a lot of people like the look of this. Um, structurally, it's not necessary, but for aesthetics, you know, it's pleasing to the eye. And uh, um, it would be helpful in, in, as far as uh, a tool to, to help you lift the the rafter in place um, again uh, it's not structurally necessary but it might be an option for you all right guys let me back up just a little bit and <clears throat> make a recommendation before we get further I, I may have gla glazed over this a little too quickly um, when you're setting these queen posts before you set the the primary rafters here um, what I would do is take you know we're going to use these two by sixes as an example usually you would use uh, two by eight floor joists I would at least take um, one set of these and uh, you know install them at the bottom of the uh, queen post here um, and then uh, um, both sides of course but we'll just do it uh, just draw this on one side for an example um, this kind of gives you something to screw the queen post to and uh, um, a little bit of extra sport and also something to brace to so because uh, these queen posts are going to be quite wobbly at the top here so what you want to do is uh, take some extra girts um, the ones that you haven't installed on the gable ends yet and uh, put them here uh, let's see here let's see if we can do this you might even want to you know go ahead and put a couple up here for temporary bracing and uh, in addition to that you know put put a maybe one in the middle or or you could even, uh, you know, run a couple at an angle like this. To kind of, uh, kind of give that queen post a little support while you're working on the upper structure. Doesn't hurt a thing to do this this way. Okay, you know, and then of course run a, run one to that one, run to that one, you know, and on and on and on. Um, you can even brace the other way, run angle, run uh, two by sixes this way, or two by fours, whatever you might have on hand uh, for bracing. Okay, um, a lot of times you can use the old form boards that you use for the concrete, uh, you know, for extra bracing. It never hurts to have extra bracing on the job site. Um, I've found that uh, having extra lumber um, is never a bad thing. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, just a couple recommendations on that. You know, something to keep that that queen post from from moving around too much. You may even want to take a couple of uh, small two by six two by sixes and just run them across here, you know, to the bottom of the post, and run them up to here even. You know, keep it from <coughs> keep that post plumb so that while you're working up here everything stays plumb you know you can always take these bracing off you know after you've get you get a lot of the structure up but all right so now once you get the uh, rafter set the main primary rafters um, this should only take really less than a day uh, it really doesn't take very long what I would do is I'd build these the day before you want to set them rent the machine uh, for a day you know, whether that's a telehandler or a uh, um, 
or a uh, um, crane. Okay, uh, once you get the main um, the main trusses set, uh, the next step is to uh, install your lower rafter beams, the ones that go right here. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, you see here we have the uh, lower rafters installed. <laughs> Just use a, uh, a regular lift, or you can do this by hand, really. Um, these are really not that heavy. And if you have a deck built right here, you can uh, um, you know, bring your beam into the center and then slide it up onto your deck, you know, get up onto, uh, you know, walk up to your uh, second floor there via ladder or stairs. And then, uh, you know, a couple of guys, one guy with a ladder up, up at this point and the other guy kind of on that uh, lower deck. Uh, to hold the tail and just kind of set it in place. Make sure both guys have screws and uh, bolts and what they need to attach this beam. Um, most likely you're going to attach it down here first and uh, there's not a picture of it here but this uh, four hole strap plate comes with a, an, a third hole right here that is a quarter inch for a temporary mounting screw. So just like all the other hardware uh, that you get with your hardware kit um, that will help with uh, installing this uh, this rafter beam um, so then once you get that uh, rafter beam in place where you like it you know use uh, a minimum of two three eighths by eight inch GRK screws to attach it through here so you would pr most likely go you know drive the screw in through this direction um, Let's let's go ahead and draw that out here. So you would start here and kind of draw your drive your screw almost level to the ground, uh, about like this, okay. And then, okay, once you get that these two GRK screws or RS screws installed, um, you may even want to go as far as to put a couple more this way. You know, start start on the upper rafter and go this direction. Um, this would kind of tie these uh, two beams in together and make a very very strong joint here. Um, you know it, it's all up to uh, your own um, I guess insight, instinct on the job you know what you feel is uh, necessary um, but uh, a minimum of two screws uh, is the absolute minimum. Uh, you could go with four or six even per joint. Just uh, um, use your own wisdom, and uh, um, it, it doesn't it doesn't ever hurt to use more screws. So, so at this point, once you get these uh, um, secondary rafters installed, um, you can go ahead and install these center tie beams. And let's see what that would look like here. Okay, so these are pretty self-explanatory. Um, you know, just come in with the... You can set these by hand, or you can set them with a front-end loader on a tractor. Um, just set them in place and bolt them down. Uh, there's really not much to it. Um, everything should be level and plumb already, but you want to double-check and make sure. Uh, once you get that done, uh, go ahead and, uh, if you don't have your loft installed, go ahead and do that at this, at this point. You know, so while, um, while you're installing the rest of your loft, probably at this point you're going to be installing the center portion of your loft. Uh, another guy or, or, you know, you could be installing these uh, uh, purlins. Uh, you want to make sure you do this fairly early on. Um, for example, let's say before you even put this lower rafter on, you may want to go ahead and install these uh, uh, purlins up here. Not 100% necessary. Um, it, it just the decision you're going to have to make on the job site. You know what makes the best, the most sense. Uh, but you do want to have these uh, purlins installed uh, fairly soon after putting these rafters up to kind of support them um, from racking back and forth in this direction here. So. Um, get those uh, purlins installed 
and the rest of your loft deck, and then you can finish your your you know your gables, your your gable uh, girts and siding, and you know you know leaving your 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 uh, door openings and install your doors, and you pretty much have a uh, complete barn at that point. So you know a few finishing touches, and uh, you'll be off to the races. So anyway, I hope you guys like this video. Um, if you have any questions, uh, post them below or in the Facebook group uh, for the uh, Barn Geeks Facebook group. If you're not a member of the Far Barn Geek Facebook group or the Barn Plans Library, you can do that um, at, at our website, barngeek.com. Uh, uh, but that gives you access to videos like this and uh, detailed instructions on how to build a post and be a barn. So anyway... Um, we will catch you on the next video, and uh, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye.